We are at the uh, Rotor Riot warehouse. It's an off day, so no one's here. I think it's it's been a while since I brought you guys here, right? A couple things have changed. We got the layout of the front room is a little bit different. There's a new office layout upstairs too, but most importantly, look at this. We have a skate ramp in here. Maybe you've seen that on some of my Instagram stories or of their social media posts or whatever. But anyways, I'm here for two reasons. One, I want to pick up my seven inch drone. Our uh, tune master Tyler was borrowing it for a little while to compare tuning notes. I think I got a pretty smooth tune on this. This is the HD1 XR. It's our kind of newest frame release. But we'll, we'll play with this later. The other reason I'm here is because I want to play with my Cinewhoop in the warehouse. So just in case you're not familiar with the term Cinewhoop, I usually fly a five inch freestyle drone. The Cinewhoop is pretty different. It has three inch propellers, so it is smaller and more lightweight. More importantly, it's got these ducts, which you know, are supposed to improve the efficiency of the props. Um, normally you wouldn't want ducts because with a freestyle drone, you're doing a lot more acrobatics and the, the ducts kind of hurt that. But the way you fly a Cinewhoop, flips and such aren't as important. So ducks help with efficiency and they also provide bump ability. The props are blocked. So what Cinewhoops are really meant for are cinematic flights that are gonna be in close proximity to things that you wanna have that safety of being able to bump off them without doing damage. They really shine in indoor scenarios. So that's why I wanna fly this thing around the warehouse. Cinewhoops can make for some amazing footage, but the thing about Cinewhoops is you pretty much have to use Real Steady. Real Steady is a post-production software that allows you to stabilize your footage and it can make drone footage look so smooth and amazing. You can use it on really any type of footage. I tend not to play with it too much. I think a really good video where you can kind of compare is the Rotorite video where we were out on the sand dunes chasing those sand rails. All of Nurk's footage was stabilized using Real Steady. All of my footage was not, and you can kind of see what are the different effects. I think most people would agree that Nurk's stabilized footage has more of a cinematic look to it, but I kind of like the way my footage looked, where you saw more of the banking movement of the drone. When it comes to Cinewhoop flights though, you really don't want to see any of that. It's, it really should be as stable as possible. Like I said, Real Steady is kind of a must. But maybe that has changed. This is the GoPro Hero 9. And if you didn't see my full video about this new camera, and essentially it's, it's heavier and more expensive than I'd like, but it really packs a punch. The image quality is amazing. And it also has some new built-in stabilization features that I think could compete with Real Steady. I need, I need a new GoPro mount for this bigger camera. So on this Hero 9, there is a new stabilization mode called Linear Horizon Lock, and it has a very similar effect to Real Steady. Essentially, it kind of takes out some of the fisheye effect and makes the, uh, the field of view look more linear, and it also tries to lock the, the horizon to be even. The name is pretty self-explanatory, and the end result is a very real steady looking clip, where essentially it doesn't necessarily look like an FPV clip at all. It looks like the drone has a gimbal for the camera, that the, the camera is able to stay stable, independent of the drone movement. But it is actually an FPV drone, which means there are types of shots that you can do that you couldn't do with an actual gimbal stabilized camera platform. Get in. Oh, almost, there we go. Look at that. Looks pretty good. Okay, we've, uh, we've got the camera on the drone. Let me try to demonstrate the, uh, the linear horizon lock. Okay, I've got my arms locked and I'm gonna start just tilting my whole body. And you see how I'm tilting in the frame, but the background is staying locked? It's pretty crazy. But eventually, there, there it goes. It eventually breaks. That tipping point, you see it can, ew, it can create some pretty, pretty bad effects. And so, as I've seen some, some testing done on this mode, it, it has its limits, but, what I'm hoping is that for cine whooping, you don't necessarily need to angle so much. And if I can keep it past that tipping point, which is, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy, we should get 
a really nice looking stabilized shot. All right guys, I'm all geared up and ready to go. We got the drone over there, it's recording. What you're seeing right now is the image in my goggles. So we're gonna do a lap and you're gonna see what I see when I fly. So you're gonna see all the movement of the drone and then after we'll review the GoPro footage which will be the stabilized version of the same flight. Oh, I can feel the weight. I can feel the weight of the nine on this. I didn't feel it as much on the uh, on the five inch, but I can feel it on my cinema. All right, I'm gonna start my line looking at the sign. I'm just gonna back away from it. And then head into the warehouse. And be as smooth as possible. Even though the GoPro is gonna stabilize it, the, uh, the more you have to make it work, the worse the results can be. So you wanna be good as you can. Can we get up here? Smooth. Can we drop? One. Oh yes. That is nice. Right, let's look at the little photo area. That's fine. Uh, I think that's going to be jerky. Over the ramp. Good and smooth. You can get close to stuff without hitting them. That's going to give you the best results. Uh, the real gauntlet is making it upstairs. Ooh, ah, bah, 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 bah. In the studio. Whoosh. Hit the light. That's not good. Yeah, that's going to look bad. There's no saving that. I never know what to do when you can only go in and out of a room the same way. It's like, go in, look around, go back out. It's nice when there's two ways in and out. And now we need to make it back down. No, oh, that was rough. And we'll just end by looking at our skull. Bonk. <laughs> let me out, uh, let me free. Yep, yep. Let's go get that. <laughs> <laughs> Trim this, slap it on the timeline, add a dramatic song, maybe widescreen, I don't know. Yeah, we'll try it with a widescreen, looks okay. Turn off the prop noise, let's see what we got. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not. Not. Probably not as good as a true real studied clip. Some of the real study clips I've seen, have j they're just so nice. I think this does a worse job at taking out the kind of up and down movements. I mean, even real study struggles with that. It can handle the left and right really well, but kind of 
abrupt altitude changes, it's, it's just hard to deal with, but I do think Real Steady does a better job than this built-in um, option. I also think the, uh, the resulting video ends up being more cropped, right? With Real Steady, you actually feed in a wide angle video and it flattens it out and I think it just has more image to work with. This is trying to flatten it and stabilize it kind of in the camera. I don't know, at, at the end of the day, I think this looks like a narrower field of view, which also is, accentuates any little bobbles, right? The, the wider it is, the, the more it's hidden. So, real study is better. This is pretty good. For no work, this is pretty good, because real study, let me tell you, that's it's a pain in the butt. You gotta load it in, you gotta fiddle with its reference points, it takes so long to render. I mean, this is just to get that straight off the camera, that's pretty good. I would say you're gonna have to be better at flying because, um, you know, I pointed out where I made some mistakes. I was too jerky or I bumped off something. It did okay, um, but I mean, that's on me. I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Let me, I'm gonna play with this a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit longer, see what we can do. There's a little, there's a little bit of flying skill required to get a good Cinewhoop shot. It's fun though. Uh, all right, sync clap. Check, check. Got my microphone going today. Cause I saw some complaints from some of you guys in the comments about the bad audio in the, the desk area. I know the AC is loud and all that stuff. We'll do something about that. And I don't want to redo the background anyway. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about talking about the Cinewhoop, the GoPro 9 on the Cinewhoop. Is it? A real study killer. No, I don't. I don't think it's as good as real study. It is pretty sweet though, and it's very convenient to have it built into the camera. For for me, for you know, shooting a quick little vlog, I'd probably be sooner to use uh, the, the built-in linear horizon lock versus doing the the post-production step of real study. If I were hired to do a professional gig. Real Steady, I think, is superior, and I would take the extra time to make the client happy and deliver the best possible result. That being said, I think that it has the potential to get better. Uh, GoPro does have a good history of releasing updates and improving the, uh, the the software capability. I know when Hypersmooth was first uh, put out on the was it the GoPro Seven? You know, it was pretty good, but you really couldn't use it for freestyle or abrupt movements and. They, uh, they really improved Hypersmooth and a lot of freestyle pilots just leave it on full time now. So I think there's a good chance that we'll see an improvement to the linear horizon lock mode and it could more and more be able to compete with Real Steady. I actually mentioned before, GoPro acquired Real Steady. Real Steady was just a small company that came up with this awesome piece of software and GoPro bought them. So I, I think that the, the linear horizon lock is actually real study logic getting built into the GoPro. And I don't think they've they've 100% figured it out yet, but I think they're on the right track and we're only gonna see it get better and better. So even if it does become a real study killer, real study still wins because they're part of the GoPro family, right? I did try a couple of different settings to try and optimize just how good the camera could stabilize it. And I found that you wanna make sure you can use high hyper smooth, not just standard hyper smooth. What that means is uh, you can't use a four by three, you have to use 16.9. Um, when I'm doing more cinematic footage, I often do like to shoot in four by three because it, it gives more image above and below this 16 by nine image. So in post, I can 
kind of reframe the image if the subject is a little high or low, um, you know, similar to how you would use a, a higher resolution if you wanted to reframe, but with 4x3 it's kind of like free extra reframing capability in the up and down direction. But that being said, when you use 4x3, you don't have the option to use high hypersmooth, and it really creates some bad kind of up and down movement. It can't take out any of that. It looks really rough. So you want to make sure that you have hypersmooth turned up as much as possible when you're using this linear horizon lock to make it look as stable as possible. As far as I can tell, there's no setting to adjust that break point of the where it tilts or how fast it breaks or whatever. So again, hoping for a future update that smooths out that transition or maybe even lets you define where it breaks. Um, it's not a problem with the Cinewhip flying as we saw it. I never in the, the flights had it kind of break in a jarring way, but on some other flights when you are doing more banking, sometimes that transition is really abrupt. So that's something I'd really like to see them improve. So while it's not as good as True Blue Real Study, it's pretty great. Uh, if you want to see more of what I'm talking about with the really well done, real steady Cinewhoop shots, definitely check out Nurk's channel. I, I mentioned him several times in this video. He's a super talented pilot and is, is kind of more focused on the cinematic side of things than I am. He's also closing in on 100,000 subscribers. He's going to beat me to it. He's going to beat me to it. But I love that guy and I can't be mad about it. So check out his channel if you're not subscribed. Subscribe to it, help him get to 100,000. Maybe subscribe to this channel too if you're not helping me get to that 100,000. Uh, as always guys, I appreciate you hanging out. Do what you love and persevere.